Today we're going to discuss a big trick in pricing items for eBay. Something that will make it simple and easy for tons of items that you're out there trying to find a price for and list. Hey, it's Don. Today we're going to address pricing your items on eBay. It's a huge question I get all the time. How do I price this? How do I price that? For a ton of items that we sell, I don't even have to look up so many of them. Now, it doesn't mean that I've got this all-encompassing knowledge on everything that I sell, but if you know and routinely have looked up things in the past, you're going to run into patterns. Certain things we sell never ever sell over a very specific amount on eBay. Never happens. Even the high-end ones only have a certain spot that they will hit. Now whether it's say buttons or postcards or comic books or magazines or action figures, geez there's so many things that we sell that you can get a general consensus of a price without having to look it up. Now one aspect that a lot of people forget or just don't think about when you're looking stuff up is the time that it takes you to look up those items. If I buy a huge lot of say 100 postcards, the average person will probably just say, I gotta look every single one of these up. It could take you hours if you're not into that area, if you don't have any basic knowledge at all. But once you've done some items like paper, postcards, comics, action figures, trade cards, geez, there's just anything you can think of. There's tons of that stuff out there. Posters, advertising things, tools, all sorts of different things. There's usually a max price that the best version will go for. There's a median price that the average one will go for and all sorts of things like that. Now, many items that we list, I just set a standard price. We list every single one of them at. And it comes down to the time factor, how much time we have into it. I could look up, say, 100 stickers or labels of some sort, every single one of them, and only find two or three at max that would be worth adding an extra 10 or 15 bucks above and beyond any of the other ones. For getting an extra 10 or 15 bucks for two or three items out of 100, 200 items is a waste of my time. It's just wasting your time because the time you invest into looking those items up is time you could have used to list a whole bunch more items, even find more items to sell. So sometimes I will just set a grand total price like some of the labels we sell. $34.50 I price certain things at all the time. No matter what, $34.50 for some items that we sell. Now some may sell just at that $34.50 mark. Bunches of them I may take offers to, or I may even send offers to watchers to people that are watching or looked at the item. It's just the way it goes. There may be one or two of those items, too, that may have went for 10 15 20 maybe 30 bucks more than what I listed them for. But we've made more money by doing that, by not investing that extra time into something for just a, a small difference in price. For me, 25 30 bucks is a small difference, considering that I would have to look up every other one if I didn't do that. Now, I wouldn't recommend doing that if you don't know anything about the stuff that you're selling. You could be missing something that's worth a ton of money. That, again, goes back to investing into these categories, investing into a niche, investing into knowledge, investing into understanding certain items that you see routinely or that you'd like to source down and sell. Now, I'll use postcards for an example because most people know what a postcard is. Most people have a basic concept. They could be used. They could be not used. The older ones are smaller. They're standardized or the larger size. So most people understand postcards. Most people would understand a real photo postcard, knowing what a real photo is. So with postcards, certain cities, say Los Angeles, Chicago, Atlanta, they're big, huge cities. Most of the postcards from those cities, from any main street, downtown building of any kind, all fall into the same price range. None of them are usually worth more than a set amount. So if it's just a standard individual postcard of just a city scene, it's not a real photo or anything, there's a standard price I price them all at. Now I've had 1,000 postcards from New York, 1,000 postcards from San Francisco, probably 1,000 postcards from almost any big city out there we've had in inventory. So I have looked them up in the past, but I realized that there was just no reason to do that. 
All you've got to do is be able to pick out those top few, 5% or less of the cards once you've got the basic knowledge. And those are the only ones you'll ever have to look up. And even some of those, the longer you do this, the better you will be at it. And there'll be less and less that you'll ever have to look up. That goes for records. That goes for movies, DVDs, CD sellers, all that kind of stuff. It's the same basic principle. When I run into 45s from, say, Elvis, he made hundreds of 45s, but most of them are priced in a small ballpark range. They all sell in this certain range. So we list them at the median high end of that range, all of them, unless they're a specific type, say a label. That goes for comic books. The average comic book in certain eras, Bronze Age or something like that, if there's nothing special going on in that comic book, no first apps or anything else like that, they're usually about the same price, a couple bucks. That can go for Silver Age, say, uh, cartoon characters, Snoopy or, or uh, Bugs Bunny or something like that. There's a set price that the vast majority of all of those go for. Once you get that basic knowledge, you don't have to go in and look up every single thing you do. Again, you've got to have at least some knowledge to do that. You can't just start and say, I'm going to list every one of these postcards for 10 bucks because that's what I think they will go for. You have to have sound reason and knowledge on that. If you put in the basic time to understand, again, we're talking basics. You can understand and grasp the basics on it to know which ones would stand out above and beyond the normal card. You can eliminate all the normal cards and just price them across the board at a standard price. There are some items I would never recommend that, though, like stamps or coins or early golden age superhero sci-fi horror comics, things like that. If you don't know that, you got to look those up. But again, there's just so many things that are common. 35 millimeter slides, um, press books, lobby cards, all that sort of thing. I can just pretty much price based on generalized rules for most of those categories. In some cases, due to quantity that we have and the fact that maybe only 1% of those items would be rare or worth anything more than the basics, we save and cut out some of that time when we list items. Now, people will be thinking, well, I'll probably be giving something away. In some cases, yeah, you might sell something for 10, 15, 20, 30 bucks or so more than you put on it. But again, you've got to weigh your time in. If I've got a record lot of 500 records, if I had to look up every one of those records, I w it wouldn't be practical. It wouldn't be worth my time. Now, records for me, I already have the basic knowledge as well as a lot of advanced knowledge, at least to know which ones to pick out. If I look through a lot of, say, 5,000 records, I may only have to look up 30, 40 records out of that entire lot to determine values on them. Just because I've seen so many, I get the basics, I know the performers these days, I know the type of music it is for another example. Sheet music, same basic principle. If you can't find a price on many of the sheet musics, there's some ballpark figure pricing that you can use on tens of thousands of sheet musics and not give away the bank, not lose any money. You'll save so much more time doing that with a lot of items. A vast amount of what we actually do list, we don't have to look up prices on. We, we don't have to. Again, if I have a bag of, say, 200 different items like these buttons here, there may be no button in this bag that has ever sold on any site whatsoever for more than 50 bucks in this bag. This is just an example, of course. So with that in mind, with the fact that no button in this bag would sell for more than 50 bucks, I would probably list them at an average of $37.50, $42.50 at max for every single one in here. And with $200 in here, there's probably only a couple that would sell for that $50 range as well. I run sales. I run markdowns. I send out offers to watchers. So I don't have to waste the time looking up every one of these. Again, I've invested the time years ago into understanding what the buttons are and value across the board. It goes for pretty much anything. I use this methodology for tons of things. Jewelry is another one. If I'm selling, say, Coral Craft pins, most specific Coral Craft pins will never sell over a very specific amount. Again, it depends on the type of pin we're talking about. Eisner pins, Weiss pins. Most of those, you can standardize the prices as well. A lot of the items I sell, there won't be any other up to compare it to. So you've got to understand the basics to play in these categories. It's another reason why I can get stuff like this, because the other folks don't invest that time, that effort into knowing them. They're stuck with what they got. They don't want to mess with other things. They don't want to waste time in their mind to dig
dig into things like this paper comics um geez just so much stuff media in general eight millimeter film slides photographs real picture real photo postcards uh, lobby cards are a big thing for me. 8x10 photos, militaria, belts, buckles, uh, geez, uniforms. Most of what I sell have standardized pricing available. Even if it's a one-off, that one-off still would fall into that range where nothing from that type of thing ever sells for over a certain plateau. And even if it's one or two that may, the time when you buy one of these massive lots, and that's mostly all that we do is buy big, huge, massive lots of stuff. Again, keeps the profits up. It keeps the investments down. And we get our money back so much quicker than sinking a ton of money or buying them one-offs or hunting around or randomly driving somewhere hoping to find something. You've got to have the basics. I'll say it again. You've got to at least have the basics. If you want to do stuff like this, you've got to invest some time in the beginning. But I promise you, it's just like anything else. The more you learn, the better you get at anything. First day you try, say, playing a piano, you're not going to get it. It's going to take some practice. And believe it or not, looking stuff up or understanding things, memorizing certain specific types of things to look for, um, understanding condition, understanding why something's better than something else, like one postcard from New York, why it would be worth more than every other postcard out there. There are some very specific things that would cause one item to be worth more than everything else in that specific area, whatever it is. So once you've got that difference, once you can see what all the other cards have in common that are low value versus anything else that's higher than that, you can price them in bulk that way. You can price all those lower value cards at a set amount. Most of the stuff we list in vintage and collectibles, I do it at a 3x on my bottom end of what I would want to get out of that item. For us, it's a time factor as well. If you're going to blow hours looking up stuff to maybe price one or two items for 20 bucks more than all the rest, again, you're blowing your money. You're wasting your time. If I give something away and somebody makes an extra 20 bucks off me, I'm fine with that. They're going to come back and still look for the diamonds in the rough. We don't pay much for most of what we sell. So if somebody wants to make a few bucks, I'm making a ton of money anyway. I'm not greedy. Now, if there's, say, an item that I haven't seen before or from a town I haven't seen, we'll use the postcard example one more time here with the specific postcard. It's a small town. I'm not sure on a price. I haven't sold it before. I'll basically look up other items from that same small town of the same era. So if I have a 1910 postcard from uh, Hickoryville or something, Mississippi, I'm going to look up other cards from that very same town and hopefully find some from that same time frame. Again, this goes for everything, even with sheet music or anything else like that. If I can't come up with a price, I kind of judge the artwork on it, the topic, the style of music against other ones from the same time frame within five or ten years of that. Now, you could miss one, of course. There's always that opportunity that you might miss one or two items. But in those cases, I would be blowing a lot of my time. And to make a couple extra bucks on just a handful of items is just not worth it. My numbers as well, my sales, my numbers actually agree that that is the best bet. Again, if you can eliminate time anywhere across the board, it's always going to make you more money. The object is to list and get as much stuff up as you can. And the more time you have invested in the listing, the better off you will be. But anyway, I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, please hit that like button down below. You can also hit the bell icon to be notified if I post new content or go live. Subscribe and tell all your friends. Set lets you And with the Deluxe Domino Rally Set you can actually Domino Rally! Basic, Intermediate, or Deluxe! Or you can get several sets and go! Each set sold separately.